So I've got this uh, picture up. Obviously, it's the finished space. Um, that opening there used to lead out onto the garden. Uh, it was the back of the house. So as you can imagine, it's quite a big opening. So it's 1.8 metres wide and it's actually um, 2 metres 12 high. So we couldn't have normal standard fit doors. And equally, because of wanting to use that room as a playroom, didn't have, want to have the doors opening into it to reduce the uh, flexibility of that room. Uh, and same with doors coming out. So um, had a look around and thought that actually making some sliding doors would be my best option. Having uh, thought I was going to make some sliding barn doors, then needed to obviously find the rail, um, as uh, to buy complete ready finished doors was going to cost an absolute fortune. So had a little look around, um, after much debate, I ended up buying the uh, the rails shown in the in the photo um, from a site on Amazon. Uh, a bit reluctant as they were coming from China, but um, yeah, they they look good. And they were nice and strong when they arrived. Um, the only thing that you got to remember is that you need to have the rail that is twice the distance of your opening. So for mine, because it was a 1.8 metre opening, I needed to have a, a rail that was at least 3.6 metres long. So putting up the rails nice and easy, to be honest. Uh, you get all the components. Uh, the only thing I didn't bother with was they gave you wooden dowels to put into the wall, as that's a, a Chinese method. So instead I chucked those away and uh, got some good solid um, rule plugs as uh, you got to drive the coach bolts in, but essentially it's a case of getting the bar assembled, um, get someone else to help you, and then mark where the holes are going to be, and then uh, drill the holes. Um, in this case, I used an SDS drill, as it's nice and simple to go into the brickwork. Uh, put in your rule plugs, coach bolts to then secure um, nice and tight and then any other fittings such as the stops and the um, dividing springs and guides that you'll then need they didn't get put in at a later stage. So once you've got the top rail up uh, you can then do a, um, a dummy trial with one of the gliding rails and then that gives you a height to which to measure from and down to the ground so you know the total length of timbers required. The timber I used was eight inches wide by three quarters of an inch thick. So as for my center planks, and then I got two sections for the uh, outer parts of the door, which were two and three quarter inches wide, again by three quarters of an inch thickness. I'll explain why for the, I got the two different sizes a bit later. So next stage, set up the chop saw, table saw if you need one. Uh, get your extra pair of hands as uh, be because you've got some long lengths of timber, you want a bit of a extra support. And then cut your sections of wood or timber down to the sizes that you need. As you need to make sure the doors are as flat as possible, Ideally, you want to have a flat work surface to uh, put all the panels on. So for that, I've got uh, an 8x4 sheet of um, OSB uh, chipboard. So um, all the panels can be laid down. You'll notice that I've got the wider panels through the middle and then the two smaller sections of woods just to the outside. And that way, that gives me the total width that I need for each door panel. You've got to bear in mind you're going to need for well certainly for my doors I was making two identical doors. Having cut your top rail to length, um, make sure that you use your spirit level just to tamper all the uh, dial panel edges so they're square. Use a um, right angle. Um, or set square to square everything up and then you can fix your top panel in place. Uh, what I did was use glue and then um, uh, use the two millimeter drill bit to then screw, uh, drill through to then uh, in enable me to put some screws in so it all held together tightly. I used four screws per section of um, door panel. 
So I've got some help here um, fixing up the first of the side panels. So the timber I'm using there is eight inches wide. So that makes sure that you get a nice span to hold the narrow um, side sections of the door to the center panels of the door. Uh, it uh, is a length that will enable that once you put on the, the base um, cross section, you will have a couple of inches a gap from bottom finishing of the door upwards to the kick plate. I'll explain why later. So I repeat the same process but on the other side of the door uh, and that gives you your two finished side edges and then you can measure from that and make sure you're all square. So both side panels are on and then I've put the, the bottom plate on. You'll notice how I've screwed um, every section of uh, the door panelling and I still have a gap at the base so actually that gap was about three inches up from the bottom of the door and that served to accommodate the height of my skirting board that uh, I'd already put in place. Obviously if you don't have skirting board then um, you don't need to leave that same gap. As I hadn't taken a photo of this process, I've just uh, done that. So as you can see, um, I managed to make a, um, a groove by essentially putting a narrow piece of timber that will fix onto the base of the door, uh, still give enough clearance to the skirting board. So that allows that channeling to be formed, which is uh, important for when you fix your guide rail to the flooring that will allow the door to run in a straight line. The rail that I purchased came with instruction for uh, position and fitting of the top roller runner uh, sets. So um, that was quite simple. I just, uh, whilst the door was on the floor, I then uh, put the rollers into position, um, screwed those or bolted those loosely um, and got them ready. So then when it came to hang the door, I could then Put it up quite simply and make any adjustments in situ. I had a little bit of help in hanging the doors. Uh, you, you can benefit from having a second person because uh, it enables you to then hold a spirit level onto the actual door um, so that uh, the other person can then make the slight amendments to door heights on the, the runners if you need to just to get them square and upright. Um, and then once doors are in upright position, you can then tighten the bolts fully and that's uh, going to make sure you get a nice snug fit. Um, before you finish, you want to make sure that you then put on the anti-jump uh, blocks that will be part of the kit. They just stop the um, door coming off the runner itself. So that's the view from the extension looking into the room. So you've got both sets of doors uh, nicely lined up, sitting straight. Uh, you can see at the bottom of the door where the gap is to allow for passing across the skirting board. And that's the doors in their closed position. Uh, obviously it's still untreated at the moment, just plain pine. Um, so uh, they need to be finished but uh, nice and square and uh, looking as they were intended. Okay, so that's the doors all finished. Uh, roll blue in colour. Obviously you've got to put down a, um, a sealant over the knots prior to painting, but uh, use, uh, use the correct products and take advice from that. Um, obviously you then also need to put on your handles if you need to or want to. Just make sure that they're small enough that they're not going to um, bang into the walls when you open the doors fully. Uh, you can obviously ex adjust the um, door openers or um, final springs to make sure that that doesn't happen. Just thought I'd include this uh, final picture as that um, doors obviously pulled together in the final stage. Um, got uh, upward radiators either side so it's in the extension and floor finished and looking good so uh, job done hope you enjoyed the video um, please subscribe if you did uh, send me a message if um, if you got any queries on how to do this 
and uh, see you all soon.